the Seattle Kraken, a new team with a clean slate and high ambitions, a city and fans that have been starving for the return of hockey, and no one better to give it to them than GM Data and his group of assistant GMs. How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome to the introductory episode, episode number zero of our brand new series here on NHL 22 Franchise Mode with the Seattle Kraken. I am so very excited to get started on this series with you all here. We've all been looking forward to NHL 22 action. I know the Seattle Kraken is a team that's being done by many different YouTubers here on Franchise Mode. I'm sure many of you are doing the Seattle Kraken as well, but the unique thing that we will be doing this Franchise Mode, I'll just throw it out there right off the bat, it will be a team that is drafted according to how I believe I would have drafted a team as general manager. So if you saw or listened to my data cast from a couple months ago when Seattle first made their team, you would already have a good idea of who I think I would put on this team. But before we get into all that, we need to start our new franchise mode. Going back to the division realignment, we are playing in the Pacific Division. As we all know, the Arizona Coyotes getting moved to the Central Division. The Seattle Crack, an 88 overall team because I've already built the team. I did not want to go through the expansion draft and build it that way because then the entire offseason would be redone. Instead, I've updated everything myself here up until the evening of October the 14th, 2021. Extensions for Barkov and, and uh, Brady Kachuk, all these are into the system so I did all that myself I sent back the players who I would not have drafted back to their original teams so for example uh, Vince Dunn back on the St. Louis Blues and we'll get through all of these picks in just a moment moving to the actual career now in my franchise modes if you are new to the channel here I always turn owner mode off because I don't need my assistant GM crying about the bathrooms or the parking lot salary cap we keep turned on I like to keep everything as realistic as possible throughout the entire series and that includes having to work within the salary cap cpu traits are on morale is turned off i don't need a guy who's injured and i'm trying to do what's best for his health come and tell me i want to be traded now because you didn't play me for one game because i had a broken jaw and now i dropped from 96 overall to 74 so don't need that Fog of War also turned off because obviously if you're a general manager and you have teams of scouts, you don't need to send out a hundred of them over the entire NHL just to tell you that Connor McDavid's a 96 overall. Head coach edits lines also off, do that myself. Auto staff management off, do it myself. And everything else not necessary. So just CPU trades are on, salary cap is on. Now going into the settings of the franchise mode, if you are interested in the little nitty gritties of all the little settings behind the scenes, I do not touch too much. Uh, fantasy draft, all that stuff turned off. Auto -save. franchise mode length 25 years. Difficulty doesn't really matter, but put on superstar. Draft pick ownership authentic. Trade difficulty to hard. Waivers on. Fog of war off, like we said. Auto scouting is just for pro scouting because I do all of my own amateur scouting. Auto staff management also turned off. Advanced settings here, injury return warning, only tell me when they're fully healed. I don't care when they're playable, you put them back in, they get injured right away. Only fully healed. Auto rotate goalies on, sim engine, engine draft class, generated prospect quality, sim engine shot, all that stuff. Keep it all on medium to start with. It, like I said, it's my first franchise mode, so we'll have to experiment a little bit and see if it's very different from 21, but keep it all on medium to start with. All this other stuff is good to go. In the sliders, you could touch these up very, very in depth if you want to go in and watch simulation and stuff like that. It makes it very much, uh, very enjoyable to be honest. Only thing I like to touch up is injury occurrence. 50 on 100, you'll be stopping simulation literally every second day. I put mine to 15 on 100. I find it keeps it realistic without having to stop simulation every two minutes because of little day-to-day -day injuries. So without further ado, let's start up our Seattle Kraken career and check out who is on this inaugural team. And here are your Seattle Kraken. Allow me to explain all of these selections because not all these players are coming to our team to stay. For example, Gabriel Landeskog, in the real world, he signed eight years, seven million with the Colorado Avalanche. However, if I were the general manager of the Seattle Kraken, with Landeskog in the contract situation a little bit up in the air, at the time of the expansion draft, I would have drafted Gabriel Landeskog and told Colorado, if you want him back, you're gonna have to trade for him. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in the beginning of the franchise mode. Gabriel Landeskog will start on our team, but as of day one, we're gonna trade him back to the Avalanche. We'll get a couple picks, prospects, whatever. I think that makes the most sense. 
because Laniscog was not necessarily wanting to leave because obviously he signed on, but Seattle was very interested and eventually it worked out, but I think they could have taken advantage of putting some pressure on Colorado. Next up is Vladimir Tarasenko. Tarasenko, I think this makes a lot of sense. Vince done a great selection as well, but Tarasenko, not happy with Seattle, requested a trade, was left unprotected. I'm surprised he did not get selected by Seattle, and I think this is a really wasted opportunity, or just a missed opportunity, I should say. And we're going to have Vladimir Tarasenko be our guy going forward. He's going to be our top scorer, our first line winger, possibly even our captain. I'm very much looking forward to Tarasenko being on this team. And I think it makes a lot of sense that he is here. Andre Palat, I decided to take him over uh, Yanni Gourd. I know he only has one year left at 5.3 as opposed to the two or three years that Yanni Gourd was signed on for. But I think Palat is the much better player. And I'm willing to risk that our ability to pay him money will make him want to stay as opposed to Tampa Bay. Going to have to take discount deals and probably was eventually going to free agency. Jane Schwartz signed as a free agent. I decided to keep him because that's exactly what I would have done if we were going into the offseason. I would have tried to sign him, so that's great. Adam Larson from the Edmonton Oilers. I decided to stick with that pick. Justin Schultz from the Washington Capitals. And obviously through this entire time, you could see the little image in your bottom right corner. On the Capitals, they took Vitek Vanacek and then ended up trading him back to the Capitals. Instead of doing all of that, I would have just drafted different goalies, which I'll get to in a minute, and just straight up taken Justin Schultz, a solid 84 overall offensive defenseman from the Caps. Only one year left on the deal, I know, but we can't only take players with term or else we only end up with players who are much lower in overall but signed for a longer time. Sometimes you got to take a couple risks here. I think Justin Schultz will enjoy his time. Just uh, Josh Bailey from the New York Islanders. It was between him and Jordan Eberle, and I explained my rationale in my uh, data cast video about why I would take Bailey over Eberle. It's very tight, but I do give Josh Bailey the edge, and it's pretty much a toss-up to be honest, but I decided to swap them out. I sent Eberle back to the Islanders, and Bailey is going to join us here on the Kraken. Calais Yarncrow, agree with that from the Predators. Jared McCann from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Will Butcher now from the New Jersey Devils. Instead of the uh, the original selection being Nathan, Nathan Bastion, I think Will Butcher makes a ton of sense here. Cheap contract. He was been he's kind of bouncing around in the real world. He signed with Buffalo. I think he'd be much happier here with Seattle. We're willing to give him a top four role as well. We're willing to pay him. I think he's been buried a little bit on bad teams. I'm very excited for the selection. I think another big missed opportunity by Seattle not taking Will Butcher. Jamie Alexiak decided to stick with that from the Dallas Stars. Uh, Jake Bean, I decided to take him now from the Carolina Hurricanes instead of Morgan Geeky. Uh, in the real world, he was an RFA, was not signed to this contract because Columbus ended up signing him to this contract. But I took him from Columbus and sent Geeky back to the Hurricanes because I think, again, another missed opportunity because this is a team that had money, had roster space, and could have taken a great young player and said, you're going to be the future cornerstone of this defense. I think Jake Bean has the ability to do that. So I'm willing to take him on. Uh, sorry to any Blue Jackets fans because I went back in time and changed it before he could sign on. Happy to have Jake Bean on board here in Seattle. Colin Miller from the Buffalo Sabres. Instead of Will Borgen, I say might as well go Colin Miller again. Maybe he won't re-sign back after, but I'd rather take a shot on an 81 overall not re-signing than taking a 73 overall who's never going to grow in Will Borg uh, Borgen. So Colin Miller, 2-way D, 81 overall, welcome aboard. Mason Appleton from Winnipeg, yes sir. Brendan Tanev from Pittsburgh, absolutely. Shane Gossespierre from the Philadelphia Flyers. Instead of, what's his name, Carson Twerinski who just ended up getting released in the real world anyways. Let's take Shane Go Gostas Bear, Gostas Bear. He's been having some tough times in Philadelphia. He was on his way out, obviously, since he got signed by the Arizona Coyotes and was just looking for some sort of you know change of scenery. In the expansion draft, I would have told him, listen, you have a lot to prove. You have a lot of skill, but you've been struggling. Come to Seattle. There's a lot of room. There's some guys on expiring deals. There's going to be a lot of room for you to fit into the top six and future in the, in the future in the top four as well. Come give it a couple years of a chance and we'll go from there. So I think Shane Gosses Bear is a solid selection from Philadelphia. 
Dennis Shalowski from uh, Detroit, yes. Ryan Donato, free agent signing, kept him on board. Hayden Fleur from the Anaheim Ducks. Originally, I took Sonny Milano, but in the real world, he's on the IR for quite a while. Hayden Fleury, I think, does make a lot of sense, actually, looking again at youth. We can't just have all 30-year-olds. We've got to have some youth in the system as well. So Hayden Fleury from Anaheim, we stuck with that. Marcus Johansson, free agent signing. Christian Fisher from the Arizona Coyotes instead of Tyler Pitlick, where they ended up trading away to Calgary anyways. Christian Fisher, good two-way forward, bottom six kind of guy, happy uh, with him. Dylan Gambrell from the San Jose Sharks instead of Alexander True, another good two-way forward who's in the bottom six, has potential to grow as well, I like him a lot, has a great flow. Kale Fleury from the Montreal Canadiens, Jeremy Lozon from the Boston Bruins, Riley Shahan free agent signing, Kale Clegg from the LA Kings instead of, what's his name, Curtis McDermott? McDermott, I, I thought this would make a lot more sense. He's 23 years of age, a lot more room to grow. And another one of those, a bit of a head scratcher in my opinion for why the uh, Kraken did not take him, but very happy to write that wrong in my mind. Gustav Olofsson, free agent signing. Alex barry Boulet claimed off waivers by the Tampa Bay Lightning. Cole Lynn from the Vancouver Canucks, I like that one a lot. Julien Gauthier from the New York Rangers instead of Colin Blackwell. I thought that our top, our bottom six was already filled up well enough with guys like Gambrel being added to it. So Julien Gauthier, a nice young guy with potential. I'd rather have him in the lineup. Matthew Beniers. I'm going to get to the created players in a moment, but he's one of them. Uh, medium elite, 75 overall, 18 years old, two-way forward, the second overall pick in 2021 by Seattle. I created him thanks to a couple other channels, Tactics HD, uh, Super Highway Gaming. Uh, I kind of I took what they did, mashed it together, put in some of my own input, and I created a bunch of players, including Matty Beniers, and he's going to be big for this franchise moving forward. Great, great prospect. I gave him an X Factor as well, the Unstoppable Force. He's very strong in the puck. Uh, obviously, there's probably some other ones I could have added. I'm not an expert on all the prospects in the NHL, but Matty Beniers is part of this team moving forward. Matthew Phillips, now you may be saying, where's Mark Giordano? I took Matthew Phillips from the Calgary Flames. Not to say he's better than Giordano, but it comes down to not having enough um, cap space, basically. By adding guys like Tarasenko and having good defense already, Mark Giordano doesn't really have as much room. I'd rather take, even though he probably won't make it ever, a 74 overall low top six kind of guy that allows me to have room for uh, Vladimir Tarasenko to be on this team. Plus, I needed cap space for Gabe Landeskog. Even though he's leaving, I need the original cap space to take him in the first place. Last but not least, Mason Shaw for, in, in the forwards and skaters, that is. Mason Shaw from the, from the Minnesota Wild instead of Carson Soucy. Soucy's great, good defenseman, but again, coming down to here's a young guy with potential who may not be doing well in that franchise. Let's give him a lifeline and see what he can do on our team. Now for the goaltenders on the Seattle Kraken. I stuck with Philip Grubauer, the free agent signing. He's going to be our goalie because in the real world, again, if we had the opportunity to sign him in free agency, I would have just done that. Chris Drieger backing him up at an 84 overall. Malcolm Subban, to me, the third goalie, he was my selection from Chicago instead of the original selection of John Quinville. And then Antoine Bibo is a free agent signing. You may note that I didn't mention the Ottawa selection and Joey Decord, but don't worry, we'll get to it in a few minutes in the franchise mode. Just wanted to quickly say as well, Malcolm Subban, I feel like this was a huge missed opportunity by Seattle. He's now the fourth goalie on Chicago with Fleury, Lankinen, and Dalia ahead of him, ahead of him, maybe third tied for third goalie at best he's an 81 overall has medium starter potential him being the third goalie in our system i think will be a fantastic piece of depth for us and makes a lot more sense than selecting john quinville to be honest so there are three goalies right there grubauer backed up by drieger it's a very solid goalie goaltending um, committee i would say now you may be saying to yourself there is one team missing from what i just went through and you would be right the columbus blue jackets instead of gavin bayreuther i selected max domi a guy with one year left has a lot to prove, has not been doing well in Columbus. I thought this made a lot of sense as well for Seattle. Now, unfortunately, be, again, because of Landeskog and Tarasenko and all the money situation, what I did was I dropped Max Domi to free agency and on day one in the franchise, we'll sign him to a one-year $5.3 million deal, which, was, which is what he signed to in the real world. I think he only wants like $2 million, so giving him 5.3 will be a guaranteed signing. Once we trade away Landeskog, we'll have the salary cap to take him on and that will be the final piece of the puzzle. 
Getting to the created players that I mentioned now, just going through them quickly. I know there's so, so many that you could create. I just went through some of the big ones. Like I said, taking some examples from Tactics and Super Highway Gaming. And just in my opinion, who some of the big prospects who aren't in the game are. Jake Sanderson on the Senators, 78 overall, high top 4D with attributes looking like this. Kent Johnson, the third overall selection in the 2021 draft. To the Blue Jackets, 73 overall, medium elite playmaking centerman. Some of them have some X factors as well. Luke Hughes, uh, fourth overall pick in 2021, uh, 72 overall, medium elite offensive defenseman, 17 years of age. Matty Beniers, we already saw him, medium elite 75 overall. Matthew Boldy from the on the Minnesota Wild, 76 overall. I made him a two way forward. I thought that was a bit more accurate than the sniper I used to have him as. A uh, high top six potential attributes looking like that. Owen Power, the first overall selection in last year's draft, 77 overall, two way D to Buffalo, medium elite, six foot six, massive big boy. He's going to be big. He's got a couple X factors on him as well. Rodian Amirov on the Maple Leafs, 73 overall, medium top six, two way forward. Uh, Vasily Podkolzin, 77 overall, high top six, two way forward to the Canucks. And last but not least, Yaroslav Askarov, 73 overall, high elite butterfly goaltender on Nashville. So here we now find ourselves at the beginning of the preseason of year number one with Seattle. First things first, we got to trade Gabe Landeskog back to the Colorado Avalanche and see what we can get back in exchange. So I'm looking more at rookies here, rookie skaters I'd be more interested in from Colorado. Trade value is definitely different this year, so don't think that they have very little value. It's relative to everyone else. Like for example, I don't think I'd be able to get Byram and Newhook for Linus Gog. Uh, even though Linus Gog's value you would think would be much higher. It's a bit odd this year. So um, Justin Barron, Martin Kaut, maybe guys like that. 75 overall, 21 years of age, two-way forward, former first over, first round selection, Martin Kaut. That could be a guy who doesn't see a future on such a packed offensive team, perhaps. Even Shane Bowers, I'm only medium top nine. It'll be him or Justin Barron. I don't like Barron only has 66 overall, but it's not a big issue. Uh, you, know, I'm, you know, we have some defensive prospects. I'm going to say Martin Kaut and a draft pick. You know, if, if, the, if, the, if the Vegas Golden Knights can get, like, Alex Tuck, uh, in exchange for not taking like Jonas Brodin or something, I think we can get Martin Kaut and a second round pick in 2023. I think I probably even get more, but I'll be nice here. Kaut and a second round pick in exchange for not taking Gabe Landeskog. Colorado, absolute no brainer. I'm going to accept this deal before you change your mind. No problem. I know we could have gotten more, but I like to keep it as realistic as possible. And now with that taken care of, we can go into free agency and sign the last piece of our team, Max Domi, our selection from the Columbus Blue Jackets. He only wants 2.2 million, so he'll be extremely happy to receive that 5.3. Consider those options, Bello. Get back to me ASAP. Don't, yeah, don't you worry about it. Alex Wenberg, also a guy who's in free agency. Uh, Seattle signed him to a contract worth above 4 million, but he's not a piece that I would need anymore with Max Domi being on the team, so I thought that would be realistic to let him drop. And oh, by the way, your eyes do not deceive you. In NHL 22, the king has returned. Kyle Wood, I transferred him over from Cladno in Extra Liga to free agency. 25 years of age, 6'7", high top 6D, 74 overall. You already know we're signing him. The absolute legend himself from all of our NHL 20 series especially. Let's get this man signed up. He's actually not even a, he's, it's a bit of a meme, but he's not a bad signing at all. 74 overall, high top 6D potential. Bang, three years, get in here, big boy. Cannot wait to have you in. Uh, other pieces we could think about, Gusev, Damaris, Cahoon, stuff like that. But I'm pretty content with how our team looks. Before we start simulating through the preseason, a few housekeeping things I always like to do at the beginning of a franchise mode. First, we got to go into the coaching staff and see what we're dealing with here. Who is our head coach? Oh, a nice Italiano? What's this guy's name? A Paisano. Aiden Giordano. Okay. A minus offense, A defense, A minus coach influence, and then Bs and B minuses the rest of the way. 56% team fit. I still have to fix the lineup. Not terrible. 
Only B rated though. Uh, the uh, assistant coach B, assi sorry, associate assistant B minus goalie coach a D. Head coach in the AHL is a C. So 88 staff chemistry there, 64 in the NHL. Okay, and for the scouts, this I have to completely overhaul myself. I'm gonna put a video. Uh, I mean, you may have seen it already in my how-to scouting video, but I'm gonna just gloss over it in this video because I'm gonna save that for the actual uh, how-to on scouting. But basically, I'm gonna fire all of my AHL scouts, keep two or three NHL scouts, and then hire some more amateur scouts. I'll do that off-screen in just a second. But I just want to see: are there any better head coaches that we could hire? It doesn't look like it. Year number one, it's pretty slim picking. So we'll probably get a new head coach in future years, but we'll stick with this guy at the moment. All right, some scout offers have been sent out. No problemo. Now let's start looking at the lines. But before we can do that, we have to do some roster moves, sending people down to whatever that pineapple team is because there's no real AHL affiliate at the moment, unfortunately. The Palm Springs team is not in the game. So forwards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13th forward for injuries. But if we go in the system, yeah, I'd, probably, I'd call up uh, Johansson and Gambrel, and then I'll just send down Kaut and Bariboule. There we go. Defense now. And keep in mind, Domi's coming in as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Bean slash Ghost 7th or slash Miller. Clay can go down. Then we got Chalowski and Flurry also in the system. So we are looking good there. Goaltenders, we have Grubauer and Drieger. So we'll best lines that for a second. We'll best lines that in the AHL as well. Now coming to the NHL. So... Um, I'm not going to even touch these lines yet. I'm just going to simulate into the preseason, allow the scouts and Max Domi to sign on, and then we'll fix up the lines and see what your suggestions may be moving into the actual regular season. What is our identity going to be? What kind of team do we want to be? What are we looking to do in year number one? That's a lot of what we're trying to figure out here as a team here. It's not just me playing franchise mode and you watch along. We are a team here on the channel. Whether you be leaving comments on YouTube or over in the Discord server, the link in the description, we are working together to create a dynasty and have a fun time along the way. So all these people, all these scouts are signing on. Great. Extremely happy to accept your offer. Thank you, Mr. Domi. And Kyle Wood says yeah, he believes this signing will be good for himself and the franchise. You better believe it. Let's get them in the lineup. I'm going to fix up what I think the lines should look like, and then we'll simulate the rest of the preseason. So here's how the Kraken are looking with a full lineup. First line, Jaden Schwartz, Max Domi, and Vladimir Tarasenko getting a plus one. Remember that chemistry, if you've seen anything about chemistry in NHL 22, less about player type, more about line fit and X factors. Unfortunately, we have no X factor chemistry line contributor, and the line fit is decent. We do have a couple X's here from Domi, which harms the line chemistry. Uh, not other great options though, unfortunately. Second line does get a plus two though, with a lot of check marks here. Line score of three plus four is seven, plus four again is 11. Palat, Yarncrow, and Bailey, a plus two. No longer just one, three, five. You can now get a plus two on chemistry. Third line, Donato, McCann, and Appleton. Fourth line, Tanev, Gambrel, and Christian Fisher. Defense, Butcher and Schultz get a plus two. Bean and Larson get a plus one. Alexiak and Ghost, despite offensive and defensive defensemen, get no chemistry, just a zero. Between the pipes, Grubauer backed up by Drieger. Scratches on defense, seventh D, Colin Miller. 13th forward, Marcus Johansson. On the power play, we get plus ones on both units as well. And down in the AHL, haven't really touched those at all, to be honest. Just really just going by best lines. This is what it gives us, a plus two on that first line. I'll definitely be signing some guys, though, in free agency. We have defensemen playing on this fourth line. So do, do not need to worry about that. I'm going to get some defensemen, some uh, forwards signed up. And with the lines looking like that, I think we can continue to simulate a little bit into the preseason. I don't want to name a captain just yet, especially without hearing all of your input, but I do believe that alternates for Bailey, Tarasenko, and Larson do make the most sense. I could also see A's going to Butcher, Alexiak, even guys who have a bit more experience like Schultz. I could see, you know, Johansson, McCann, I could see a lot of uh, good leaders on this team, but I think for three alternates, those are good selections.
I'm also going to fix up these jersey numbers because they are just atrocious right now. Like Palat number two. I do have like less than 45 minutes on this 10-hour EA Play trial though. So I'm going to just do that after the video if that's okay with everybody else, including sending out the scouts. I'm going to get that done uh, once the game actually drops on Friday, which is when you're watching this, but not when I'm recording this. So let's keep on simulating to the regular season. First game with full lineup. We beat the Oilers 2-1 in a shootout. The Lightning want to give us Taylor Radish and Hugo Allenfeld for a third and Marcus Johansson. We're definitely going to be turning down some crazy trade offers because trade value, although not as broken as it was at the beginning of NHL 21. 8-1 victory against Vegas. What? The trade value still a little bit broken. Thankfully, like I said, not as bad as the beginning of NHL 21, but still not great. 3-2 shootout win against the San Jose Sharks. Seven points in four games for Justin Schultz. I could also see... Uh, an A on his chest as well, but I like Larson for the defensive leader there. 5-4 shootout win against the Anaheim Ducks. Calgary Flames at home were 5-0. We get shut out 2-0. Makes sense. Last game of the preseason. Let's go check it out. At home, Climate Pledge Arena against the 1-1-4 LA Kings. First slow sim game of NHL 22. Let's see it. First period, 2-0 Kings. Philip Dano. And Oli Mata. Second period. 3-2 the Kraken come back. Release the Kraken as everyone's going to be saying in every video of every franchise mode. Schwartz, Palat on the power play and Bailey. Three big goals in the second period. We're up by one heading into the third for the final preseason tune-up. Matt Wa on Drieger ties it up at three. We're out shooting them 30-25. to LA's coming back. Could it be a little bit of a thriller here with 10 minutes to go? Who wants to be the hero on home ice before we get into the regular season? Five minutes to go. Will we see overtime? No, it's Brendan Lemieux scoring late. Do we have any late heroics on our side? No, Mikey Anderson adds the empty netter. Great preseason, though. Three goals on, 37 shot, on 34 shots. LA scoring five on 37. Brown, three assists. Not the greatest way to end it off, but a very strong preseason nonetheless. Let's quickly look at some of the stats here. And then we'll have a better idea of how this team should be kind of structured moving forward. Again, what are we trying to do in this first season? Tarasenko uh, with ten, five goals and 10 points in seven games. Crazy. Schultz at eight points in seven games. Domi seven and six. Palat, Yarncrow, and Schwartz all with six and seven. Then it really starts to drop off there. Josh Bailey, Fisher two, Butcher two. All the way down the line here. One point for everybody else. So really the top players coming through. Tough defense, negative four for Adam Larson, negative three for Jared McCann. Okay, uh, Philip Grubauer, 5-1-0 oh, with great numbers. Drieger letting in four, six goals on 49 shots in the times that he came into play. Not ideal, but he's an 84 overall, so I'm really expecting a lot from him, especially as one of the more higher rated backups in the NHL. Thinking about some two-way players that we can sign to play in the AHL for our team when it comes to the forwards, sorting by overall here. I'm gonna go ahead and send contracts to Brandon Peary, Michael Dalcole, Rourke Chartier as well. I saw him somewhere in here. There is Rourke Chartier. So let me send out those three offers. Hopefully that's enough for, I'll send, I'll find a couple other randos as well while I'm here. All right, all those contracts are sent out. They'll probably sign on in the coming days. And then in the next episode, we can fix up the lines in the AHL. Not a big deal. Uh, should also note that for the created players, including Matty Beneers, you have to put them on a three-year contract or else they're RFAs. And then there's a big issue with contracts, other team offers sheeting them. So unfortunately, although it's not accurate because Veneers is going to be back in college, same for Owen Powers and stuff like that, I need to give them three-year contracts so that they are signed by the team and that that team doesn't lose their rights. Not ideal, but when we're trying to create players, that's what we got to do. We'll fix up the lines for chemistry and all that good stuff once they all sign on. But that's just about it. Heading into the end of the introductory episode here, getting ready for episode number one next time. So just quickly going through all the trade blocks in the NHL, if there's anyone we want to think about acquiring, whether it be moves to try and make us contenders or moves that just allow us to get ready for the future, sorting by overall, going through the trade blocks quickly just so you can see everyone who's available to us. A lot of no-name prospects. Jeff Skinner is here. A lot of no-name prospects, though, most likely. I doubt there will be anything too interesting. Drury, uh, Stillman, Baudet from the Blackhawks, Bocage, Blue Jackets, Stars, John Klingberg on the block, as well as Suter, Ben, Glendanning. Okay, there's some good options there. Detroit having the Mesnikov on the block. Edmonton, McLeod, Broberg, Lavoie. Okay. 
Hornquist, Thornton, Achari, Gudis on the Panthers. Dano, Arvidsson, Edler, Brown on the Kings. No one on the Wild. The Canadian money added, Kidney, Teasdale. Uh, Ekholm, Grimaldi, and Borowicki on the Predators. Even though I just got his extension as well. The disrespect. Four years at 6.25 and he goes on the trade block. New Jersey Devils, PK, Subban, and Jason Damaris. Islanders, Zarnik, Rangers, another guy, Senators, Pontus Aberg, Flyers, Cam York is here, Sushko, Ratcliffe, okay, Penguins, Jeff Carter, Brian Boyle, Evan Rodriguez, Sharks have Burns and Carlson both on the block, Blues nobody, Lightning, Radish, Kachuk, and some other guys, Maple Leafs, Amirov, uh, one of the created players, of course, Avramov, Dark and Shinsev, Canucks, Patan, Golden Knights, Coughlin, Krebs, Chaika, okay. Capitals, Oshi, Orlov, Eller, Kempney, Jensen, Jets, uh, Villanova, Cole Perfetti even on the block. Very similar blocks as the ones you would see at the beginning of an NHL 21 franchise mode. And if you're trying to wonder what, what does our trade value look like? Oh, so those prospects have such low value. Yeah, but here's the value that Vladimir Tarasenko has, for example. So do not think that those values are necessarily super low. Here's the value of Matty Beniers even. Our best, one of the best prospects in the league. So that's how that looks. And our draft pick situation is solid enough. We have a first, second, third. You know, we're not out on picks. Don't have a ton of them stockpiled like Vegas did. But we do have a few picks to our name. You also may have noticed that I didn't go over my pick from the Ottawa Senators. Originally, I had taken Evgeny Dadanov, but due to cap constraints, that was not going to be possible. Joey Decord, he was originally on Seattle. I sent him back to Ottawa. My apologies when I created the franchise mode. I did not bring him back to Seattle. So all I'm going to do is trade Antoine Bibo to the Senators because I wouldn't have had Bibo anyways if I had Decord. So to try and keep it as realistic as possible here. They say I'm quite far off in value, so unfortunately I have to give up a, a pick to right my wrong. But that works out actually because I'm going to give Calgary's fourth to Ottawa because I shouldn't have this fourth since I didn't take Pitlick. I took Christian Fisher. So to balance out the universe, Antoine Bibo, who I wouldn't have had, the fourth round from Calgary, which I wouldn't have had, going to Ottawa for Joey Decord, who I would have selected in the expansion draft. So thank you very much. The world is now balanced as all things should be. Thanos is smiling on a grateful universe. And we can continue. And that will be a wrap for episode number zero here with the Seattle Kraken, my friends. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. If you are brand new to the channel, if you have just a minute, give myself a little bit of a pitch on the channel here. I go by data. I started off making really videos consistently in NHL 20. Since then, we've grown over 3,000 subscribers. A fantastic, really wholesome, helpful, fun community. Especially in the Discord server that I spoke about earlier. I really encourage you to get in that server because we're not just talking about, oh, data posted a video or something no we're talking about franchise mode sports we're talking live conversations during hockey games uh pop culture everything in between but especially sharing our own franchise mode content getting suggestions from others sharing our accomplishments or the times that we scratch our heads in certain channels on the discord server so if you like franchise mode if you like nhl that's a place for you leave a like if you're excited for this series and please do consider subscribing as well it really helps out the channel it's a a newly YouTube partnered channel as well. So it really does help and I appreciate every one of your views. I really do take the time to sit down and reply to every single comment. So I encourage you, please feel free to leave a sentence or even a novel of your thoughts on this team. I would love to feature your comment, think about your comment, have a discussion with you and let's make this team a dynasty. Maybe not in your number one, obviously, but we're gonna go for a few good seasons. I'm looking forward to some success here with the Seattle Kraken. There's also the link in the description for our Twitch page, a bunch of other stuff aside from NHL, MLB The Show Franchise Mode, F1, uh, so I've done walkthroughs in the past as well, not so much since we've been focusing on franchise mode more recently. But it's a real smorgasbord. Even our NHL 07 Dynasty Mode series took a break on that to finish NHL 21, but that will be coming back soon. NHL 07 with the Atlanta Thrashers. Uh, even Wii Sports, we've been doing a series in Wii Sports. So it's a real fun time here on the channel. And honestly, I truly believe that it'll be that much more fun with you being a part of it. So I encourage you to try it out, see what you think. And you know, honestly, there's so many people here that would just just love to have and on top of that if you need help with NHL franchise mode I post a lot of how to kind of uh, walk through videos for things like scouting line chemistry which I'm obviously going to be updating and posting again now that NHL 2 22 has come out give the channel a chance there's so many people that would love to welcome you to this community it would be a really awesome time to have you on board but I will stop there thank you so much for taking the time to watch looking forward to this new series on NHL 22 let me know your thoughts on the Seattle Kraken team what do you think about my thoughts in the channel
changes that I made from the original expansion draft selections. Which ones do you agree with? Which ones maybe not so much? Who could be our big performers moving into the future? Do you like anyone for captain or alternate captain especially? And let's go from there. So thank you so much for watching once again. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one where we'll begin our inaugural season with the Seattle Kraken.